Welcome to Lessons in Leadership, Steve Adubato, my trusted colleague. What is it? Robin and Batman and Robin, like my trusted <laughs> colleague. There she is, my partner in leadership, not crime, but excellence. How are we doing, Mary? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Steve? It's a long taping day. We started at nine. It's about four. How is it that we're so upbeat at this late hour? I have no idea. I think it all goes back to attitude. I know we've had some great guests on today talking about the power of positivity, the power of positive thinking, affirmation. And I think that's why. And plus, you're such a joy to work with, as am I. So it just makes a day just a nice joy ride. By the way, everyone here, uh, April doing makeup and Scarlett and Lake, they, they just fell off their chair when they heard <laughs> you say something like that because they know you don't mean it. Uh, I mean it. We right, always have great tape days. It's not about us. It's about Kirsten Rasky, who's senior account executive, NJ Biz. Kirsten, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Love Thanks it. for that's, having me. Well, you got it. That's the NJ Biz logo, one of our media partners, and uh, a go-to place to find out what's going on in the world of business in New Jersey. And we believe it's the Newark skyline. Kirsten, tell everyone what NJ Biz is, both in print, I get the old school version, as well as the digital version of NJ Biz, please. So... Background on NJ Biz is NJ Biz is the oldest business to business publication covering the state of New Jersey. And um, through the past few years, um, our digital presence has grown. We do still have our print, our print product, as you know, it's mailed out every Monday, except for on holiday weekends. And um, our digital is all about getting our audience out there. And we're constantly expanding on our markets. Um, not only to um, bring the best to bring the best value to our readers and towards the people who choose to do marketing with us. Mm. You know, Kirsten, what's interesting? Again, I, I mentioned old school, meaning I like newspapers. I like getting my NJ biz, but I'm also following it digitally. To what degree? Because we're talking about leadership, and every time Mary and I talk about leadership, we think about pivoting, innovation, adapting, blah 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 blah. To what degree have you and your colleagues, as leaders in the world of publishing, business, news, to what degree have you had to constantly pivot, adapt, and evolve to stay relevant? Um, like all the time, I think. Like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny because we all talk about before COVID and after COVID. It, it seems whoever I talk to, it's always that conversation. And we've all had to pivot rapidly the minute that COVID happened. And so there was a lot of change in technology. And as we all know, and as we experience, technology is changing every day. So we're always pivoting. We're always looking at the best technology, the best things that we can do to bring news to our readers the way they like to consume it. I'm old school paper too. But, th but getting it on your phone, again, you like newspapers, I like newspapers, but I also see my NJ Biz announcements, EE blasts, whatever the heck you want to call them. I'm sitting there going, NJ Biz just, Biz just told me something I didn't know in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Because our that's how some people want it. That's how some people want it. I will tell you that our editorial team is amazing. Um, I always go, oh my God, how are they on Twitter all the time? How are they doing this? And how are they getting out articles? But they're constantly on top of what's happening um, within the state. And that's one thing through technology we've had to do. And we've had to um, do a lot of things sometimes with less people. And so technology has been great because it allows us to do that. Yeah, Mary, jump in. Yeah, definitely, Kirsten. So obviously, you know, NJ Biz, you hear a lot of what's going on with business in New Jersey. What are some of the greatest trends, lessons that came out of the pandemic, things that have changed, whether it's having to do, I'll, I'll frame it, I'll, I'll, I'll put one question, as Steve always says, just one question. What have you found to... <laughs> Steve's laughing at me over there as I'm fumbling, but I actually have a really good question. So okay. did you find that there was one thing specifically that businesses really needed after the pandemic that, that you wouldn't have even anticipated that they would have needed? You know, there's a few things that always come to mind, but the one thing that I, I've seen across for all businesses and I've had this conversation is that the pandemic allowed people to be human again. I, we really got into a point that I would see my clients and they'd be dressed up in business attire and they would have um, 
suits and ties on like Steve always does. I've never seen him without a suit or tie. Um, you know, it's always, so you always saw people that way. And you didn't really know, maybe you knew a couple personal things about them. But as we all had to work from our homes and we've had this hybrid work now, all of us have learned that we're human. The people who do business in New Jersey are human. We have dogs that bark, we have technology that fails. We have, one of my clients had a little naked kid run through her when she was doing a live telecast. <laughs> Hold on, so, Kirsten, Kirsten, Mary said to me last night, she goes, listen, just think about what Kirsten is saying right there. Mary, what did you tell me about your dog that you wanted to do today in light of what Kirsten, Kirsten is saying right now? Oh, well, yesterday I was getting my whole studio set up and the dog came down in my basement and was just laying at my feet. And I'm like, I just want her to lay there. But the second that the mailman comes, I mean, she'll probably knock down every light just running to eat the mailman. So obviously the dog is upstairs. You'll still hear her, her bark, you know, around 11 a.m. or so. But yeah, I mean, it's all part of this new normal that we're living in. And it makes us realize it's OK. It's totally OK. We all have dogs. We all have kids, you know. But, so the it's, are, but to Mary's point, sorry, Mary, but, but Kirsten, the walls are coming down. Yes. Yes, they are. And what's really nice now is it was I actually was out with a client for lunch and she goes to me, oh, my God, it's so good to see you again. And I was like, Kelly, I don't think we've ever met in person. And we really hadn't because we had met during COVID just through Zoom calls wow. and things like that. So I think that whole human aspect, though, now is really going back into our live events and seeing people one on one, seeing people that you've only met virtually um, before. And you are and having live events. I've been reading. Sorry for interrupting, Kirsten. You are having live events. You had a panel recently that your editor. Tell everyone who your editor is. Uh, Jeff can I. Yeah, I, I saw Jeff moderated a forum on a whole range of subjects. You're actually having hundreds of people go to these events, participate in these events. And we do so much stuff online, some stuff in person. You have people who want to be out there. We do. Um, we do. Our All of our award events have been in person this year, with the exception of one. Um, people are coming out. People want to see people. They, they all of a sudden people want to have coffee. They want to go intermingle with people. They want to know, hey, when I network, who's going to be there? And there's some people who still aren't comfortable and that's fine. And everybody understands that. And real we quick, just go with it. Uh, real quick before Mary jumps back in. NJ, NJ Biz is noted for a lot of things. Uh, but one of them is your lists. You have yes. a lot of lists. And let me ask you, how popular are the list editions? The top this, the best that, that's important to a lot of leaders. It's really, it really is. So we have a couple different ways we do lists. So the list you're referring to, Steve, are like our Power 100. Um, we do Power 100, we do Power 50 in health, in real estate and different ones. And um, it's, we have some leaders who have been on there for years, like, three years, like they'll even put, they'll say something, been on the list for three years. Our edits team, it's all based on people in New Jersey who are making a change for the betterment of New Jersey in business. And our edit team decides that on their own. It's all editorial and they do a great job in vetting people. And so people know that we're on that list, that they were chosen to be on that list for a reason. And it wasn't because of anything else, but because of the New Jersey Biz editorial team. And you know what's so funny, Mary, about this? I, I We had an editorial meeting recently of our partners on, at the Caucus Educational Corporation, our, our, our not-for-profit production company. We actually used the NJ Biz top, I don't know, forget what category it was. I think it was at the power list to start booking guests because we thought, hey, they're on the NJ Biz power list. They belong with us. And we must have booked 10 guests just from that list. So it's interesting how... You share information. Go ahead, Kirsten. So, then Mary I don't know, maybe it, should we be charging you for that then? Yeah. <laughs> you do all the work and then we read the benefits. <laughs> we do, we're doing the work for you, Steve. I wish no, thank okay. you for that compliment. That's a great compliment. Can we, I love can we it. quick edit that part out? That I, no, no. Okay, Mary, Mary, one more question before yeah, we Yeah, definitely. So second. Kirsten, um, I know I've read, I read somewhere that you believe that you should learn one new thing every single day. And I, I don't know if it was in another interview that you did. I just wanted to know where did your passion for lifelong learning come from? Curiosity. It, what do you mean? It, 
comes down to curiosity because learning is being curious. You learn things. And I believe in everything I do, especially in business, um, in my life is that I'm curious about people and I'm curious about what they do. So every time I go into a meeting, I always learn something new from one of my clients. And that's what I look for is to learn something new. Sometimes it's not like learning a new task or things like that, but it's just a, a new bit of information, a new way to think about things. And I always say, you know, when I go in these meetings and they give us trainings and things like that, I always look for a new thing. As long as I could take something away from something, it's worth my time. You know, Kirsten is saying a new way of looking at something. That's what Mary and I have been about with lessons in leadership from day one. Not just our view of leadership, but how others view leadership. So it's so interesting you're saying that. Also, let me disclose that even though we're taping this on the 12th of April, it'll be seen later, we have an upcoming partnership that we have with NJ Biz where we're going to be doing something on South Jersey business. And Jeff, your editor and I are going to be doing an intro to that after that's done. So we look forward to future partnerships with NJ Biz. They are the go-to, a really great go-to publication. Check them out online and uh, old school in print. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you both. You got it. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Fedway Associates, Inc., Veolia, Resourcing the World, Choose New Jersey, and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIANJ, and Commerce Magazine, and Meadowlands Media, a print and digital business news network. Valley's all about making life easier for clients, and that's why we're all about smiles, too. So every day, we make it possible for home buyers to become homeowners, for folks chasing their dreams to become entrepreneurs, for parents to plan today for their children's tomorrow, and for communities to get better every day. You see, when we know we've put a smile on a customer's face, well, that puts one on ours, too. Most people don't think about where their water comes from, but we do. Veolia. More than water. Resourcing the world. Lessons in Leadership, Mary Gamba. It is not take your kid to work day. It is not. It is time to have uh, Joey Gamba on the show. Mary, why don't you introduce that kid who you've known for 17 <laughs> 17 well, years? Well, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah, 17 years. He's going to be 18 on May 5th, so right around the corner. Fun fact about Joey, he was born on May 5th, 2005, so 05, 05, 05. But unfortunately, he was born at 5.03 p.m., so he couldn't oh, have waited that. two more minutes, Joey. That would have been another fun fact. But that hey, that's on fun. you. Don't blame that on me. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you guys work out your stuff at home? But here's the thing. Joey is not on the show because of the birth date and all that information. Mary, tell everyone why we have Joe on. Yeah, so we've been doing a, a whole series on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, our sister series. It's called The Arts Connection, but it's also about leadership. It's about youth leadership in the arts. Uh, Joey just recently accepted an offer. He committed to be going to NYU Tisch uh, in New York City, so we're super excited about that. He's going to be studying drama, so that was a really long process. And as Steve and I were talking, we said, hey, you want to know what? Let's do a, a feature just you know on Joey, but about really what young artists are going through and the uh, the challenges they face, and really why adults especially need to be supporting the arts. And there'll be a whole range of younger uh, folks in the arts as part of our Arts Connection series that our executive producer, Georgia Timoney, will lead the effort on. Joe, let me ask you, uh, you make this decision to go to NYU, but there are a whole range of things. Mary and I were talking offline. We, we talk about you and your brother and, and, and our kids, and my wife and our kids. We talk about you behind your back all the time. 
So here's the thing. We know that in addition to filling out applications, there are a lot of video um, auditions that had to be sent all over the place. You've performed in all kinds of stage plays, all kind, right? All kinds of things. The most recent include? So the most recent show I just finished up was Sunday in the Park with George, which was at my high school. I actually just began a project. I'm working on a short film called The Fight or Flight Response. And I actually just came back from our first rehearsal today just to come out here. And yeah, so that's what's happening in my life. Right Go back. Now. What is the fight or flight? I know what it is when it comes to people freaking out, going one way or the other. When it comes to public communication, what are you talking about? So we haven't been given a full script yet. We have heard the concept. So the short film is about these three teenagers who are coming together to watch Nightmare on Elm Street. They're just having a fun night, but it soon turns into a nightmare at where they are. It turns into a nightmare for them. Uh, Mary, I'll have you come in in a second, but Joe's got me really focused right <laughs> here. So, so hold on, Joe. Go back for a second. When did you know, I, Mary's tired of me here and Georgette is as well in one-on-one. -on -one. I always ask actors, performers, artists, when did you know that the arts, that performing would be a part of your life? That's a great question. I didn't begin actually doing theater until eighth grade, which wasn't that long ago, only a little over four years ago. But I had been doing little performance type things throughout my entire life. But one thing I'll never forget is in my seventh grade yearbook, my public speaking teacher wrote in my yearbook, because he was also the director for the shows, you better come do the show next year. And so that's what motivated me to go and audition for that first show. And also one other thing is for my birthday that year, my mom, thank you, mom got me tickets to go see Hamilton, which was the first Broadway show I remember seeing. I saw The Lion King when I was like six, but- What did Hamilton do for you? When I watched Hamilton, I had a moment of just knowing that I wanted to do what they were doing. I saw them and I'm sitting in a seat in the mezzanine of the Richard Rogers Theater, bawling my eyes out next to my mom in a theater of 800 plus people who are all being connected and brought together around this story that really occurred hundreds of years ago, yet it still can impact us today. And having the opportunity to have that impact on people is just something that I find remarkable. Mary, how proud of you uh, are you and Bill of that kid? Pretty proud of him. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's it's really fun to watch. Wait, uh, and it's so said, Joe, your mom's not that sentimental. Do you know that? Like I try to pull it out of her and she like that was just, that was like a layup. I gave you like a layup. I right? know, I know, I know. <laughs> I know. Your well, just no. talks about blowing his eyes out, coming together in a Richard Rogers theater, singing, singing, <laughs> watching Hamilton. And I, and I don't, God, I don't Mary. cry. I'm sorry. I do cry sometimes. Oh, like I cry at weird commercials, right, Joe? Like we'll be sitting on the that couch. Show? Don't what try show? to say you didn't cry. You cried oh, at Hamilton. Mary. Oh no, I did. Oh, no, I cry in those moments, but about my kids. And it's so funny. I don't get sentimental because I feel like they're exactly where they need to be. And watching Joe through the last seven months, I guess it's been Joe, watching you audition, watching the hours of work that you put in, and just your heart and soul into it, and then it paid off at the end, I'm proud. I don't get really sentimental. I am just so proud, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. But I do want to uh, flip the switch for a second, Joe, because this is a platform where people are watching. What message do you have for adults out there in terms of why should adults support the arts? Obviously, you are a powerful communicator. You're doing what you love. You're doing what you're passionate about. But even at your high school, there were cutbacks, right? We lost one of our great lighting directors that was there, people that were there, people got shifted around. Why support the arts with money, not just with applause, why support the arts? That's a wonderful question. I think a lot of people's view on supporting the arts is about supporting people like me, people that want to pursue this as a career. But I don't think that that's what it's totally about. 
because of course, when you're supporting the arts, you're supporting me being able to pursue what I want to do with the rest of my life. But what you're also supporting is all of those kids that just do this for fun, because although we may think of doing it, and I just said it, doing it just for fun, you're learning numerous life skills that you can apply anywhere that you go. You're Such as, learning, Joe, such as? You're learning how to collaborate with others. You're learning how to present yourself. You're learning how to put yourself out there, which especially nowadays where in any career, there's so much self-advocating that's necessary to succeed anywhere that the arts, not just theater, but any sort of art, even practical art or art that you may see at a gallery, whenever you produce and put yourself into a piece of art, you're putting yourself out there. And by taking that step, you're already taking a step towards bettering yourself as a person. And when there aren't the opportunities for people and for children to step forward and to put themselves out there, when programs are getting cut back, when teachers are getting fired because we don't have the budget for it, then opportunities are being lost and lessons are being lost. Hmm. I won't ask your mother how proud she is because I already got that answer. Uh, okay. But Joe, I'm, I, what I'm curious about is is this. I, I've, Mary, you know, if you think back on all the conversations you and I have had, and Joe's been in the background, and Joe's a, a very uh, engaging, loquacious, uh, wants to share his view. Joe, what are you you're laughing, Joe? <laughs> He's like, yep, um, that's me. Loquacious <laughs> was just a great word. I'm sorry. I just wasn't expecting it. <laughs> loquacious. You ready? <laughs> but, but here's what here's here's, and again, maybe because it's from a distance and I have more objectivity than Mary does. To see to see you communicate, because my art form that I'm still kind of suck at at times, um, is communicating clearly and effectively, right? Here's the thing. To 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 remember you as a kid five, six, seven, eight years old, and now, and you are this poised, confident, I'm going to get my point across, I'm going to do it with conviction and clarity. That just doesn't happen. You have to, quote, put yourself out there, get feedback, get coaching, be nervous, be fearful, get through the anxiety, do it again and again and again and again. Yeah, it's it's what's necessary. And I'm very proud of where I am today. And I... I'm not going to step away from saying that I, I put the work in. I didn't get into NYU by accident. It was a lot of work and a lot of hours and a lot of sleeping four hours before a school day so that I could finish up an essay that I had to get done by the next day. Is it grit, Joe? Is it grit and persistence? I was just going to ask that. Yeah, the grit it's and the grit. resilience. Because I'm it's hearing grit. grit. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say grit a and lot also to contemporaries, Mary. They're waiting for some, and I know this they're is they're waiting. They're waiting for someone to give it to them. Ain't well, happening. Well, Joey, Joey, put it in perspective, just so people know. So when you apply to go for a BFA, a Bachelor's of Fine Art and Acting, so just share how many applications. I mean, just quickly, of course, thirty seconds or less. Applications, interviews, pre screens, etc. So I applied to 21 schools, which the normal amount is between 20 and 25 is normally the aim for BFA students. I applied to three schools academically, the other 18 were audition based. So for all 18 of them, I had to audition for 15 of them. I had pre-screens, I passed 14 of them. So then I had 17 live auditions to go to. I think about seven of them were virtual and about 10 of them were in person. So there were multiple times where I would take the train into the city by myself, go audition in front of a panel of four or five people, and then take the train back home. And mm -hmm. it's grueling, but that's the life of an actor. It's auditioning is the work. And if I'm not ready to put myself out there for college auditions, then I know I wouldn't be able to be ready to pursue the career. Joe, real quick, you mentioned the arts. You mentioned acting. Mm -hmm. Rejection. I, I ask every actor, every performer, 
Listen, I, I tell Mary all the time, I lost count of the number of networks that fired me or told me <laughs> not. They're like, don't come back tomorrow. You're fired. <laughs> yeah, my contract wasn't. Rejection. A huge part of that world. You're ready to do this, Joe? To be rejected. I'm not trying to be negative, mm -hmm. but rejection is part of the business. It's not the it exception. Is. It's the rule. It is. And my answer to that would be now I am. You can ask my mom and she will attest to this. When I was in eighth grade and I auditioned for my first show, I got ensemble. And when I auditioned for my second show, I got ensemble. And both times I'm bawling my eyes out that I didn't get a call back. This is the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Also, to be fair, after auditioning and getting ensemble twice, I tried convincing her to let me go to a performing arts high school, but that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> but that rejection, and I know you use the word grit a lot, is what helped me build my own grit. And every step along the way, there's rejection. And some rejections hurt worse than others. I didn't get into my top school. My dream school was UNCSA, which is a small conservatory in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. They have 800 students on campus. I did a summer program there, loved it, but I didn't get accepted. And that night I was devastated. I didn't think that I was, that everything was going to be okay. I didn't trust the process, which is something that you, mom, always tell me that Matthias, my acting coach always tells me is to trust the process. And one quick story, he is a graduate from UNCSA. He auditioned for over a hundred shows and didn't get a single one. He recently booked Camelot at Lincoln Center. And last week I saw him go on as Lancelot because the lead got COVID and he went on and he was sharing the stage with Philippa Sue. And if he had given up after 99, then he wouldn't have gotten the hundred. I got goosebumps there. That's Hey, Joe, I got goosebumps. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> And to say, I just have to put one exclamation point on that. Because you didn't get into UNCSA, which you thought was your dream school, you did get into NYU. And what were your exact wording? You thought you were going to live in the city one day, but your one day is now. And you couldn't be more thrilled. Yeah, it's incredible. Hey, Joe, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll be having a whole range of conversations with other young artists. We wish you nothing but the best. And we're looking forward to seeing you wherever you're going to be performing down the road. You got a very bright future, young man. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much for having me. That's Mary's kid. That's Mary and Bill Gamba's kid. I made Joe. that. I, <laughs> he did alone. He did. All right. We'll see you next time. <laughs> this edition of Lessons in Leadership is made possible by the Bucino Leadership Institute at Seton Hall University, Prager Metis, Valley Bank, the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, the North Ward Center, the New Jersey Sharing Network, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Fedway Associates Inc., Veolia, resourcing the world, Choose New Jersey and Seton Hall University, showing the world what great minds can do since 1856. This is Mary Gamba. If you want more leadership tips and tools, log on to stand-deliver.com. That's stand-deliver.com. Promotional support for this edition of Lessons in Leadership with me, Steve Adubato, and my colleague, Mary Gamba, has been provided by NJ.com, NJBIA, and New Jersey Business Magazine, CIA NJ, and Commerce Magazine, and Meadowlands Media, a print and digital business news network. is all about making life easier for clients. And that's why we're all about smiles too. So every day we make it possible for home buyers to become homeowners, for folks chasing their dreams to become entrepreneurs, for parents to plan today for their children's tomorrow, and for communities to get better every day. You see, when we know we've put a smile on a customer's face, well, that puts one on ours too. Most people don't think about where their water comes from, but we do. Veolia, more than water, resourcing the world.